Coming up on 5-Minute News. More than 300 Nigerian schoolboys kidnapped by gunmen rescued. US whistleblower pushed to exaggerate leftist role in protests. And suspected Russian hacking spree reached into Microsoft as well as US government. It's Friday, December 18. I'm Anthony Davis. Security forces on Thursday rescued nearly 350 schoolboys who'd been kidnapped in northwestern Nigeria and taken into a vast forest, the governor of Katsina State said, bringing relief to many families. I think we have recovered most of the boys, Governor Aminu Belu Masari said in a televised interview with state channel NTA. The abduction gripped a country already incensed by widespread insecurity and evoked memories of Boko Haram's 2014 kidnapping of more than 270 schoolgirls in the northeastern town of Chibok. Last Friday night, gunmen raided the government science secondary school in Katsina on motorbikes and marched the boys into Rugu Forest, in the biggest such incident in the lawless region in recent years. Masari said a total of 344 boys held in the forest had been freed in neighbouring Zamfara state. The boys were on their way back to Katsina and would be medically examined and reunited with their families today, Masari said. A retired health worker whose 13-year-old son was among the kidnapped boys could not contain his joy at their release. His only concern now was reuniting with his son, he said. Boko Haram has claimed responsibility for the kidnapping in an unverified recording. The video, which features Boko Haram's emblem, shows a group of boys in a wood pleading, Help us! Help us! The father of one of the missing boys, who gave only his first name, Umar, said his son was one of the boys who is heard speaking in the video. Boko Haram has a history of turning captives into jihadist fighters. If its claims are true, its involvement in northwestern Nigeria marks a geographical expansion in its activities. But it could have purchased the boys from local criminal gangs with which it's been building ties. Armed gangs that rob and kidnap for ransom, widely referred to as bandits, carry out attacks on communities across the northwest, making it hard for locals to farm, travel, or tap rich mineral assets in some states, such as gold. Such gangs killed more than 1,100 people in the first half of 2020 alone, according to the rights group Amnesty International. A former acting chief of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's intelligence office has told Congress that DHS leaders pressed him to overstate illegal border crossings from Mexico and overplay the role of far-left groups in violence during anti-government protests last summer, his lawyer said. In testimony before the U.S. House of Representatives Intelligence Committee, former intelligence chief Brian Murphy accused department leadership of urging him to blame far-left groups in an exaggerated fashion for violence during summer protests in Portland, Oregon, according to lawyer Mark Zaid. In a September 8 whistleblower complaint, Murphy accused Donald Trump's acting DHS chief Chad Wolf of having told him to hold back on circulating assessments of the threat of Russian interference in the approaching November 3rd election, in part because it made the president look bad. Wolf also asked Murphy to play down US white supremacist activity, the complaint said. Zaid said the committee questioned Murphy about allegations in his complaint that DHS officials pressured him to support greatly exaggerated claims about the number of people entering from Mexico suspected of plotting attacks on the United States. Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen delivered congressional testimony which amounted to a deliberate submission of false material information, according to an initially anonymous whistleblower complaint Murphy submitted to the DHS Inspector General. The evidence throws further light on the legitimacy of Donald Trump's grievances and policies, which have incited division and hatred amongst American society, painting peaceful protesters as thugs, and exaggerating immigration issues at the border. 
Federal authorities expressed increased alarm on Thursday about a long undetected intrusion into US and other computer systems around the globe that officials suspect was carried out by Russian hackers. The nation's cybersecurity agency warned of grave risk to government and private networks. The hack compromised federal agencies and critical infrastructure in a sophisticated attack that was hard to detect and will be difficult to undo, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency said in an unusual warning message. The Department of Energy acknowledged it was among those that had been hacked. The attack, if authorities can prove it was carried out by Russia, as experts believe, creates a fresh foreign policy problem for President Donald Trump in his final days in office. Trump, whose administration has been criticised for eliminating a White House cybersecurity adviser and downplaying Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election, has made no public statements about the breach adding further value to theories that Donald Trump himself is a Russian asset, albeit unwittingly. President-elect Joe Biden, who will inherit the potentially difficult US-Russia relationship, spoke up forcefully about the hack, declaring that he and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris will make dealing with this breach a top priority from the moment we take office. We need to disrupt and deter our adversaries from undertaking significant cyber attacks in the first place, he said. The agency previously said the perpetrators had used network management software from Texas-based SolarWinds to infiltrate computer networks. Its new alert said the attackers may have used other methods as well. Tech giant Microsoft, which has helped respond to the breach, revealed late on Thursday that it's been working to notify more than 40 organisations that were compromised using additional and sophisticated measures beyond the back door into SolarWinds systems. Microsoft said most of the compromised customers are in the United States, with victims also in Canada, Mexico, Belgium, Spain, the United Kingdom, Israel and the United Arab Emirates. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate. Delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news daily.